Cut the BS. Well, that's what one of Vice President Kamala Harris's allies directed her critics to do, per a new New York Times Magazine profile of the VP published earlier this week. As Axios deep dive on the piece, the outlet casts Harris as an asset to President Biden, despite her series of missteps at the beginning of her tenure. Two and a half years into her position as his number two, White House senior advisor told the magazine, Harris has, quote, found her voice and she's found her role. Per the magazine, which spoke with 75 people in her circle, all of them expressed differing opinions about the VP, agreeing only on the fact that the public has a fractured perception of her. And the proof is in the polling, a latest 538 tracker. Harris has a nearly 55% disapproval rating, 39% approve. So this is shocking information uh, that <laughs> you have reports that, you know, we think the public's divided on her, but it turns out they're pretty uh, divided on her as well, those in her inner circle. Mm -hmm. So I think Kamala Harris is a figure that's been given an impossible task. Her job as vice president has been to handle the issue uh, of immigration. And this is at a time when they've deported more Haitian Americans uh, or Haitian migrants rather than ever before than any prior administration. There's a crisis on the southern border thanks to a number of factors, including U.S. sanctions. And so Kamala Harris has not been a super vocal figure on the issue of immigration. And this is considered the administration's weakest issue. But Joe Biden did also inherit a crisis. And so she was kind of given an impossible task. But given that those in her inner circle uh, are divided on her, I think it tells us what we need to know about Kamala Harris. And it's that maybe the public disapproval rating is founded in some actual uh, real criticism about how yeah. she's decided to govern as VP. No, I mean, look, Jess, I think you're right in terms of the portfolio she was given being incredibly impossible. I mean, no one's been able to solve the immigration crisis for, what, 30 years now? I mean, various presidents, Republicans and Democrats, you had the gang of, what, eight or 12 a couple of years ago, Republicans and Democrats who tried to come together to come up with a bipartisan solution. It didn't go anywhere. So this isn't a new phenomenon in that regard. So I, I think you're absolutely right. She has a portfolio that's almost impossible to solve. And so, you know, I think Americans should probably set expectations in that regard. I think most probably will. But with that said, I do think the criticisms are legitimate. I remember, Jess, a Washington Post article that came out in 2021, November of 2021, and it talked about Kamala Harris's staff problems. And if you read through that article, it talks about how she doesn't like to read through briefing books. It talked about how she would berate her staff when she would have an unsuccessful uh, interview. And, and it also talked about how she had a high turnover rate of staffers only staying with her for about a year or a couple of months and then moving on. And so from that perspective, if you're an outsider looking in, you have to question, I mean, is this someone who is prepared uh, to lead the country if something were to happen to the president? And if you were to base your uh, analysis off of that fall 2021 Washington Post article, which was very, very in-depth, then the answer is equivocally no. Yeah, I think... Kamala Harris getting such a small fraction of support from Democratic voters in the Democratic primary should have told the, the Biden camp that she wasn't the best pick for VP. I think if we were to have a democratic process that really functioned well, uh, it would be apparent for most Democrats that the runner up is a likely good pick for VP. If voters were excited to vote for them in the primary, they're probably a good candidate that will excite people to turn out in a general election, but that's never how the Democratic Party has decided to operate. In fact, Bernie Sanders being the runner up in 2016 and 2020 was a candidate that they actually did the opposite of. They tried to quell support for Bernie Sanders. A lot of Democratic strategists were taking money from the victory fund that was meant to be used in the general election, using it to prop up their establishment picked candidates candidate. And the consequence of that is now we have a VP that's incredibly unpopular, which I think is just going to hurt Biden in his run in 2024, because yeah. a lot of people are concerned about Biden's age and are really seriously thinking about what the world would be like if Kamala Harris was the president of the United States. I mean, look, this is what happens when you choose someone because you're trying to check a box. I mean, I, I just have to be honest about that. We, we all know for a fact that Joe Biden was struggling. And if it were not for uh, Clyburn in South Carolina and black voters 
uh, who saved his failing campaign, it probably would have been Bernie Sanders as a Democratic nominee against uh, Donald Trump. And as a part of black voters helping him, sort of re reviving his dead campaign, he made the promise, essentially, that he would select uh, a person of color as his running mate. But Jess, I want to go back to that Washington Post piece in 2021 that I mentioned. And here's something that really stood out to me. Quote, staffers who worked for Harris before she was vice president said one consistent problem was that Harris would refuse to wade into briefing materials prepared by staff members, then berate employees when she appeared unprepared. Now, look, I don't have anything against the vice president. I recognize the history of her being appointed to the role, but I'm going to ask the viewers, do you want someone leading the country who doesn't like to wade into complicated material? I would probably say no to that, especially with some of the topics that we're talking about on this show from Ukraine and now Israel uh, to Haiti. And who knows what's going to pop up over the next four years. I want someone, and I would imagine most people out there want someone who's going to take the time, spend the hours digging into the nuances, asking the tough questions so that they're equipped to make the best decisions with the advice, obviously, of their advisors. Here's someone who obviously isn't interested in doing those things. And so that alone, at least for me, is disqualifying. So when you look at that low approval rating, it's not only do Americans watch her interviews, they watch her always laughing about every freaking thing. She does not appear to be a serious nor prepared candidate to lead this country forward if she became president. That's why I think a lot of the problems in uh, American democracy right now can be categorized by just a propping up of the status quo by the establishment of either party. You have Kamala Harris in the position of vice president, not reading her briefing materials. That is insane. We had Donald Trump be criticized <laughs> criticized for similar preparation tendencies, uh, how he wanted his security briefings, what have you, to be extremely simplified. I take that over someone refusing uh, to read them, and I do trust staffers who are reporting on this. But when you have a Democratic Party that wants to prop up the status quo, that's kind of what they want. They want mm. someone who is not fully prepared, who's going to speak in platitudes. They want someone who won't get in the way of what the establishment wants to do, whatever that might be, which is usually something in the direction policy wise of what corporations in the United States uh, want them to do. When you look at the amount of lobbying money collected by US government officials, it's pretty clear that they're paid to work for someone else, not the American people and it's corporations. And that's really what the establishment of either party has been about for quite some time. And now we're at the point where we don't even have leaders who pretend to represent things of value, who pretend to get things done policy-wise. We could have Kamala Harris addressing Congress today saying, hey, we are sending troops to Haiti. There's probably going to be a crisis there. We're probably going to get migrants coming over the border for Haiti. We need some policy. What's our answer? What's our solution, Congress? Let's draft some legislation. I'll work with you. We'll work together. No, we don't even have her pretending to try and work what she's tasked to work on. And I think they're relying on Americans uh, being so apathetic because of how our country has been run for so long that they're not paying attention to the administration and what they're doing because they have learned to not expect much. Uh, and things need to change before we have the you know, converging crisis get so bad that we can't handle them. No, I think you're right. I mean, it's almost interesting to me because anytime someone is critical of the vice president, uh, you're either going to be called a racist. Uh, if, if you're a black person criticizing the, the vice president, it's you don't support uh, black women. I, I've, I'm just saying some of the things that I have seen on social media or some of the commentary that I've heard from others on various networks. And, and I think you can recognize uh, the historic moment of a figure while also being critical of the figure and their ability to do the job well. Uh, Kamala Harris has not been tested on the national stage. She ran for president and dropped out before the first votes were ever cast in a Democratic primary. She never received substantial support uh, from black voters for a plethora of, of different reasons that I don't necessarily need to go into on this show. People can Google those things for themselves. Uh, and so her only chance of potentially becoming president is if Joe Biden were to run again and for whatever reason decides to not complete the term. Uh, but I, I, I'm not certain that this is someone who could run on the national stage and get enough support to even win the Democratic uh, nomination. And again, I go back to look at what her staffers have stated about her, going all the way back to 2021. 
This is just not someone who takes the job serious. And I agree with you, Jess. There would be a lot of criticism if this were Trump. And there was criticism because he wanted things with, with photos and pictures in a very simplistic way. I remember some folks saying this is very childlike for the president. Well, hell, give me the childlike individual who at least has some interest in what's going on versus the person who says, I just don't want to read anything at all. Yeah, I think as a, a woman, thrilled that we have a woman VP. But I think also when we consider identity politics, the reason we value representation from our communities is because we think they'll govern in a direction uh, that props up your community in some way, that represents your interests in a way that they haven't been represented before. So in the case of Kamala Harris, when we look at her track record, is she someone who is doing a good job representing black mothers policy-wise when she tries to enact a policy uh, where she would have to arrest black mothers if their child skipped school. Sometimes that's something that a parent has no control over. I cut class, it had nothing to do with my parents. They didn't even know. Should they have gone to jail or prison for that? When Kamala Harris was the top cop of the state of California, she continued the enforcement of a lot of draconian drug policies in a state that was pretty progressive when you consider uh, the usage and sale of marijuana. Mm -hmm. And so when we consider how she represented her community, which by the way, drug crimes, especially marijuana, uh, are disproportionately uh, brought against members of the black community, is her continued enforcement of this policy, something that propped up the racialized policing that continued in California? Or should we have gone with a candidate like Barbara Lee, who is also a black woman, who had an intense policy background, who was popular among the same progressive voters that voted for Bernie Sanders? That would have been the smart strategic pick. Why didn't they go for Barbara Lee, who also fit that identity? And it's because she's someone who represents policies that would bring the country in a direction they don't want to go in. The Democratic Party overwhelmingly propping up the status quo is going to cost them so many voters in 2024. If they had gone with a progressive pick for VP who still fit the identity requirements that they wanted, uh, they would have been much better off. And I think they're going to have a much harder time because they picked the candidate that satisfied the, satisfied the identity that they wanted, uh, but didn't do much on policy in Biden's first four years here. You know, that's interesting that you brought up um, her time as uh, California's top cop. Uh, in, in 2022, she gave a, a national speech. I don't know if you are familiar with this speech, uh, Jess. It, she was making a push to make black maternal health a national priority. She was talking a lot about uh, ma uh, the maternal mortality crisis within the black community. And I remember watching that with great intrigue because it, it, it appeared to be uh, the administration's way of trying to rebrand Kamala Harris, um, maybe a year before the conversation that we're having today about the sort of rebranding effort of her. Uh, I, I think that they are acutely aware of some of the criticisms of the vice president, particularly from black men, um, I would argue. Uh, and so it's, it's interesting to see how when you talk about her arrest of African-Americans, particularly single black mothers, and then a year later, after that Washington Post piece, you have her making national speeches about black maternal health being a national priority. It, it's obvious that they're trying to pivot to say this is someone who does care uh, about black women. We'll see whether or not black people actually believe that or not, though. Uh, more rising yeah, right after eyes. this.